Hello! Today we're catching up on the week of basketball, we're watching some highlights, then we're doing a little bit of trade talk. I'm Frank Spiro, let's talk basketball! It's inauguration day, so you know what that means. Everyone hold your breath and pray. God save us. Let's get to some basketball! This past week was the 160th anniversary of Dr. James Naismith inventing the game of basketball. Uh, here's a little riddle for you. The inventor of basketball's son is in a car accident. He has to be rushed to the hospital for immediate surgery. When the surgeon comes in, he says, I can't operate on him, he's my son. What? But whose son is he? Is he the doctor's son or is he the inventor of basketball's son? They are the same person. The doctor is the inventor of basketball. So, uh, <laughs> why don't you chew on that little mind nugget? Google even honored Dr. Naismith with a special picture of him on the search engine. Here you can see him running some kind of isolated Siberian basketball lodge. Taking notes on the children? Swish. The Atlanta Hawks have signed Pope Francis to a 10-day contract? Here's his intro press conference. Okay, he's not really on the team, but he did bless them which the Hawks really need right now. Though I'm not sure he would have done it if he was aware that the evil monk from the Da Vinci Code was on the team. Of course, this is a conflicting fandom for Pope Francis, who just last year came out as a diehard Saints fan. Well, it's almost a week later, and still the talk of the town is James Harden getting traded to the Brooklyn Nets in a four-team trade. Now, that means a lot of things for Brooklyn, and we'll talk about them in a second, but it also means a lot for the other teams, Houston, Indiana, and Cleveland. Let's start with the biggie, Houston. Beyond replenishing the Rockets' depleted pick pool to the tune of four first round picks and an additional four pick swaps with the Nets, the Harden trade also brings former all-star and masked singer thingamajig, Victor Oladipo to the Rockets. Basketball wise, I mean, who knows? Oladipo has been up and down this season, and Kevin O'Connor is already reporting that he plans to leave for Miami when his contract is up this offseason. But musically? <laughs> I think we've got something here. Picture this. Okay, so the band's called Vicky Dip and the Spacemen. Depo is, of course, lead vocals. Then you got John Wall on lead guitar, Christian Wood on the drums, and who's that on backup vocals? Daughtry. Yeah, that's right. 2000s alternative star Chris Daughtry brings his patented dulcet gargle and macho emotionalism to the Houston Rockets. And wait, is that someone over there in the back? Yeah, that's right, the boogeyman himself, DeMarcus Cousins, rocking the tambourine. No bass, just tambourine. Think about it, Houston. Think about it. What's crazy is that James Harden was on the Rockets for nine years. And for Houston fans, his leaving might feel like a bad breakup with the way he pushed himself away. I mean, Harden practically sat Houston down in a crowded restaurant, and after the apps came, was like, it's not me, it's you. And ah, yikes, sorry, also, uh, do you mind driving me to the airport? Uh, surge pricing. Uh. Despite the messy ending, Harden put out a heartfelt Instagram post, thanking the fans and the city for his journey. Which, honestly, just seems like the decent thing to do, right? I mean, can you imagine forcing your way out of a team that has had your back for so long? In the middle of a season, nonetheless? A team that made you into the NBA star you are today? And then to not publicly thank them on Instagram or, or the newspaper or, or anything? I mean, that would just be immature, cruel. I mean, that would be downright disrespectful. <laughs> I mean, who would even do that? Anthony Davis, I'm talking to you. The Cleveland Cavaliers traded a first round pick and Dante Exum for Jared Allen and Torian Prince in return. Allen has been fantastic as a rim protector, pick and roll big man this year, but it doesn't take a detective to realize that this Cleveland roster might have some redundancy. The acquisition of Jared Allen might spell the end times for Andre Drummond's time with the Cavaliers, but that might have less to do with Allen and more to do with plays like this. Low scoring affair here in Memphis. <laughs> A slow motion affair here in Memphis. 
Valentino. Yeah, they actually call that play the trying to unionize because by the time the higher ups see it, they've already found your replacement. Now, it's only fair to mention that since the trade, Drummond has been putting up numbers, including a 30 and 20 night against the Knicks. So when it boils down to it, somehow the real loser here, once again, is Cleveland. The Pacers received Karis Levert in return for Vicky Dip, which is a strong move to shore up the secondary ball handler position since Oladipo would have left in the offseason. It's not a sexy move, but it's a savvy one, like replacing Ross Butler with Charles Melton on Riverdale. You might be thinking, wow, <laughs> this Pacers front office is quite impressive. But please, that's all a facade. We all know who's really running the Pacers. Hiding in the shadows, influencing the NBA with winks and nudges. Playing the game, the NBA's little finger, T.J. McConnell. You might not see him as a threat now, but <laughs> doesn't that make him the largest threat of all? On to the Nets. If you're a Nets fan, you only have one question. How do they look on the court? Nets versus Magic. Kevin Durant getting things started with the and one jumper. Then James Harden finds Joe Harris for the deep three. Nikola Vucevic can't Vucev miss. First hits the three, then the turnaround post move. But didn't you hear? James Harden is on the Nets. Hits the nice Euro, then gets in the lane for the strong finish. Then doing it with his passing, finding fellow superstar teammate Kevin Durant. And then James Harden finds Jeff Green for the gorgeous alley you play in. Aaron Gordon would respond with the slam. Dwayne Bacon, making bacon, never bacon. James Harden with another full court pass to Jeff Green. That one's pretty. And Kevin Durant slams it in, then follows it up with a contested three pointer. You just can't guard him. It became a two man game for the Orlando Magic. Man one, first round draft pick Cole Anthony. Man two, Nikola Vucevic with the three. Then Anthony gets to the rim for the land right before leaving it off for Vucevic, who hits another three. Then Anthony does it from three point range himself. But the Nets proving they have quite the duo as well. Kevin Durant gets the scoop land, and ooh, is he gonna do the thing? Is he gonna do the thing? Ooh, he did the thing! Step back three-pointer for James Harden, then gets in the lane and finds Kevin Durant for a three. Ooh, he's gonna do it again! Ooh, he did it again! James Harden with another step back three. Aaron Gordon trying to keep his team in it with the wraparound pass, but the Nets were just too much. Final score, Nets 122, Magic 115. The first look at Harden and Durant was fascinating. With the acquisition of Harden, the expectations for this Nets team are now championship or bust. Just don't tell Harden that. He's always picking bust. Meanwhile, this Orlando Magic team seems to be stuck in a Groundhog's Day. Uh, no, Russian Doll. No, Palm Springs type of situation. The headlines for this team are, can Aaron Gordon make the next step? And will Jonathan Isaac be the same player when he returns from injury? And was that Terrence Ross that I saw on that deck that day? The day Catherine turned to stone and Isgard, the creature from below, ravaged our small port city? Which are all of the same talking points from this exact time last year. For New Orleans, Nikhil Alexander-Walker had quite the week, starting for an injured Lonzo Ball. Ball watched as Alexander-Walker dropped 37 on the Clippers. Lonzo actually made an Instagram post congratulating Alexander Walker on his great play, which is very asking your friend to prom, her saying no, then you being like, ha ha ha, just kidding, then posting a picture of her and the person she did go to prom with, with a caption like, bestie, living her best life. <laughs> Beyond that, the Pelicans have a real opportunity here. All they have to do is sign point guard Jeremy Lin, to create a Nah Lin backcourt and Nah Lins. Please, Pelicans. Please. The Clippers played the Pacers this weekend. It's like there's a mirror at half court. Pacers and Clippers tipping off on Sunday. Zubach getting things started with a slam dunk. And then Paul George comes off the screen and slams it in. Kawhi Leonard gets the layup to drop. The Pacers struggled inside defensively without Miles Turner this game, but they had it going from deep early. Doug McDermott hits the three, then Malcolm Brogdon hits a three of his own. They teamed up, McDermott running to the rim, and then Brogdon with the no look bounce pass to Sabonis who finishes the and one. Reggie Jackson hitting the step back mid-range jumper. The Clippers really took advantage of no Miles Turner in this one, getting to the 
rim there, then goes for the slam. Oh, not quite, but still good. Sabonis would try and bring his team back, getting the layup to go. Malcolm Brogdon misses the shot, but Sabonis gets the rebound, flips up, just in time, beats the halftime buzzer. Leonard took advantage too, slamming one home there, then slamming another one there. The paint is just open for business. Then check this out. Obviously, they don't want Leonard scoring in the paint anymore. They collapse on him, which opens up Luke Kennard for a wide open three. Brogdon doing everything he can to keep his team in it, hits the three, then Aaron Holiday finishes the fast break lay-in. But they had awoken the beast. Luke Kennard hits the corner three. Luke Kennard from deep? He's the new Steph Curry. Then Reggie Jackson with the exclamation point to end this one. Final score, Clippers 129, Pacers 96. The Indiana Pacers seem like a legit team with Sabanis, Brogdon, and Miles Turner running the show. These three are a classic NBA formula for success. A formula known as the BLT. So Sabanis is your bacon. He heats up quickly and is great when he's hot, but is still stellar support when he's cold. Turner, now that's your lettuce. Is he gonna stand out every single night? No, of course not. But when he's fresh, you'll notice him. And if he's completely absent, you'll definitely notice that. And Brogdon, that's your tomato. He's slicing through the lane, every move dripping in sauce and frying up the fenders, leaving other teams green with envy. And I know what you're thinking. What about the bread? Honey, Holiday Brothers. But behind every sandwich, there is a sandwich artiste, a puppeteer. Pulling the strings. Sure, publicly he's a backup guard, but secretly, he's powerful. I see you, TJ McConnell. I see you. Paul George said that being called weak after last year's playoffs has fueled him this year, propelling him to averages of 25, 6, and 5. Paul got his confidence back over the summer after pushing new head coach Tyron Liu to do the thing. The thing, of course, being laying down on the court and allowing Paul to step over him every time he makes a shot. Let's get to some highlights. The Bucks had a strong start. Giannis Antetokounmpo getting the land to go. Then Boban Marjanovic, or as you might know him, Ernest from John Wick 3 gets the land to go. Then Holiday finds Antetokounmpo for the and one. Not Giannis, Thanasis. Then he hits the corner three. It's a family affair. Luka scores in the lane, but Giannis was on fire early. Slamming one home there, then getting around Willie Colley Stein for the gorgeous finish. Then doing it with his passing too. A, it's Drew Holiday. But the Mavs have a star too, and his name is Luca. Finding THJ, Tim Hardaway Jr. there, then converting the and one to start off the second half, and then a step through and one. Dante DiVincenzo. Tim Hardaway Jr. with the finesse finish, then hitting the step back mid-range jumper. He had a great game in this one. Luka Doncic finding Kristaps Porzingis who hits the three to cut the lead to one, but Giannis was in rare form, or common form for a two-time MVP, getting the dunk, then the and one, then the nice spin move on Willie Colley Stein. Oof, uh-oh, do we have a star off? Luka Doncic hits the deep three, and then Giannis hits the three, that's scary. And then Luka Doncic with the beautiful spin move on Drew Holiday to lay it in, and then finding James Johnson in the corner to take the lead, one point lead. Here's a quote from Chris Middleton. I am become clutch, destroyer of worlds. Back to back threes, all Lopez has to do is hit this to win. He misses, 1.8 seconds left, Luka Doncic with the heave. Ugh. Final score, Bucks 112, Mavericks 109. The Milwaukee Bucks are just trucking along. At nine and five, they're currently second in the Eastern Conference, but they're still number three on my list of team mascots I think I could take in a bar fight, with number two being a wizard and number one being a rocket. I'm very confident. The Bucks acquired Drew Holiday this past offseason. For those of you keeping track at home, the current national discourse is that it's overrated how underrated Drew Holiday, the most underrated player, is overrating Holiday from his underrated status, evening him out to rated. Chris Stapp's Porzingis is back for the Dallas Mavericks after suffering an MCL tear in the bubble, which kept him out for the first part of the season. And it couldn't have come sooner, with a handful of players unable to play for Dallas due to COVID-19 reasons. Porzingis earned his nickname, The Unicorn, by starring in CBS's hit sitcom, The Unicorn, but also because he's a rare big man, 
one who can play inside and shoot outside. Of course, he's also like a unicorn in that he's constantly letting everyone down by not showing up in big moments, making me look like a fool and a crazy person after gathering half the town in the field to see what I saw, what I know I saw. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I know what a horse is. They do not fly and they cannot speak to you. Maybe I can't explain what I saw that day, but like Kristaps Porzingis and shooting threes from the logo, I'll never stop trying. Now it's time for a more in-depth discussion about trades. By now you know that James Harden was traded, but that's actually a much smaller part of a larger story. Superstars are forcing their way off of their teams more and more often before their contracts are up. Here to help me discuss this phenomenon is my tallest friend, Brian. Thank you, Frank. And actually, before we get started today, I'd like to read a little statement that I've prepared. Uh, yeah, go right ahead. Please, Frank, don't make this any more difficult than it already is. I have given everything to this show. When push comes to shove, in order for an episode to be successful, I have to be absolutely perfect. Perfect? But what, what are you reading? <laughs> Frank, please. Now, unfortunately, not everyone shares my passion and my enthusiasm. Not to get into names, <laughs> but some of us are untalented, humorless hacks riding the coattails of true greatness. Brian, that is mean. <laughs> Frank, I never said your name, so the fact that you heard it there uh, kind of kind of speaks volumes. You were literally pointing at me. I am hereby requesting a trade from Let's Talk Basketball. What? This is, of course, very hard for me. Did you write on those cards vertically? And not a decision I make lightly. Who writes on note cards vertically? I feel I have given everything that I can give and that my charm and precise basketball acumen would be better served elsewhere. This concludes my statement. Basketball acumen? Okay, 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 name one NBA player. Scotty Pippen. Okay, well that was clearly too easy of a question. Okay, but you wanna, you wanna get traded? Traded to where? I've been loving the flight attendant lately. Love to work with that Kaylee Cuoco. You can't just ask to be on a show with Kaylee Cuoco, Brian. Everybody wants to be on a show with Kaylee Cuoco. You don't think I'd like to be talking NBA opinions with Kaylee Cuoco right now? Of course I love Breaking Bad. That would be a dream role. Breaking Bad's not even on air anymore. That's, I watched it just the other day on Netflix. Okay, but there are old shows on Netflix. That's how Netflix I am the one who knocks. What, is that supposed to be a response to that? Oh. I, I... <laughs> You're not on the phone. Uh, yeah, I would, I would absolutely adore being the, the big time main host of a, of, of a huge basketball show with a big uh, audience. You didn't press any buttons. I can see that the screen is still on. Yeah, I'm available. Yeah, that's actually like kind of a perfect role for me, so. This is fake. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> are you kidding me? That much money? Wow. You're not fooling anyone. Okay, yeah, no, that's great. Howdy ho, everybody. Today we're gonna make some jokes about basketball. We're gonna watch some clips and we're gonna talk trade deals. I'm Ryan Goodwin. Let's chat hoops. Hi everybody. Today's inauguration day. So you know what that means. Hold on to your hats. Wow, it's gonna be crazy. Today marks the anniversary of when basketball was created. Apparently created by some kind of doctor. Can you imagine walking into that doctor's office? and the, the surgeon's dribbling a basketball, you'd be like, whoa, hold on, am I in the right place or the wrong place? And he'd be like, alley-oop. <laughs> so the Atlanta Hawks just signed Pope Francis to their team. Apparently, the, the commissioner was like, Pope Fran Francis, is that a guy's name or a girl's name? Do we get a girl pope now? Hold on now. Let's watch some clips. 
Chaw faced up against No last week, and oh boy, was it a game. Now look at this. This is classic alley oop and a little shot. This guy shoots it from the three point line. Swish, baby. Nothing but net. Oh, now that's a classic slam dunk. When you have teamwork working on your side like that, how can you go wrong? Make new friends and keep the old because one is silver and the other is gold. Now these guys are fighting over the ball. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be that basketball. Ouch. Ooh, that looks almost like it was going to be a foul. And then, ooh, now here's a shot. Nice. Nothing but net. Oh, now that's a nice little drive, but nothing came of it. Ooh, nothing but net. I like that a lot. And I... I don't know what to say. I need Frank. Please take me back. That's been our trade talk. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. These are the people who helped me. Please thank them as well. Last week, we asked you for Gary Harris's new nickname. We're pleased to announce that Daniel Dunkelberger has provided with Gary Harry Garris Harris. Very good. Very, very good, Daniel. For this week, a joke. Duncan Robinson and JJ Redick walk into a bar. You tell me the rest. If you have the best punchline, we'll shout you out next week on the show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Frank Spiro. We'll see you next Wednesday. This has been Let's Talk Basketball. Bye-bye.